Hello and welcome to another Foreman community demo. Please note that this demo is being recorded, so if you have any problems with the YouTube live stream, you can watch back at a later stage. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on Freenode IRC or on the YouTube live chat, as both are being monitored. And before we begin, just a few announcements. So this week, Foreman 2.1.1 has been released as well as a number of bug fixes. This release includes improvements to IPv6, SE Linux, and Overt. Please check out the full release announcement on this course. And on the Catello side, Catello 3.16 should be available next week. This release includes Pulp 3 use for YUM on new installations. And as always, uh, when the release happens, it will be announced on Discourse, so keep an eye out for that. And as well, there have been significant updates to the Catello release schedule. A link to the announcement is available on the YouTube description for this video if you'd like to take a look. And then we have an upcoming event next week. So on Tuesday, there will be a deep dive into containerizing Foreman. A link to the event details is also available in the description of this YouTube video. And then finally, uh, if you didn't manage to attend the Foreman birthday party last week, all the talks are available on the Foreman YouTube channel now, so you can check them out there. And that's all from me for now. So first up is Pius with a uh, Catello update around simple content access, I believe. Pius, can you hear me? can get a look at your your updates. Yeah, thanks, Melanie. Thank you. My screen. Do you let me know if you can see my screen? Yeah, looks good. Yeah. OK, so today I'm going to talk about toggling the simple content access. So if you want to enable or disable the simple content access from the Foreman application itself, you have to go to the subscription page and there is one manage, uh, manifest button. When you will click on this button, you'll get the modal open. And in that modal, you can see that simple content access and there is one button which is going to toggle the simple content access. So as of now, the simple content access is enabled. And if you click on this button, it will send the request to the backend. And after getting the response, it will refresh the manifest so that everything is going to be updated as per the changes. It will take some time to disable the simple content access now. So in the meanwhile, if you'll go again on the manage manifest modal, you can see that everything is you can't take any action right now because the task is in progress. So as of now, 33% of task has been completed. Just wait for a second. It will take some more time. So now the simple content access is disabled. And if you again want to enable it, you can go again on this page. And now the button is enabled, uh, disabled, you have to just click on the button and it will again enable the simple content access. It will again take some more time to refresh the manifest. So now you can access, uh, enable or disable the simple content access from the application itself. Before this, if you want to enable the simple content access, you have to go to the access.redhat.com to enable or disable it, but uh, with this functionality, you can make changes from this application itself. So just wait for a second to complete the task. OK, so simple content access is enabled now. So that's pretty much from my side. Thank you. Sorry about that, and thank you. And then the next demo is going to be James Jeffers with Podman Search Support. Please. Thanks, Melanie. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so let me show my screen. All right, just let me know if that's coming through all right. So I'm a developer on the Catello team, and we've been making some changes to better support Podman, which is a Docker client replacement. And one of the things that we've been working on is support for um, the search functionality. 
So I went ahead and I've set up some Docker container images and hosted them as repositories in Catello installation. I've got two. Um, the first one is a BusyBox container, and the other one is a Hello World, both from the uh, Docker registry. Uh, the next thing I set up was to put these into content views and then associate and publish and promote those content views into different life cycles. So one of the life cycles that I set up, um, I set up two. One I have labeled public and the other one private. Um, the one private, you'll notice that there is a um, attribute, unauthenticated pool, which by default is set to false. And what this means is that uh, not only pulling the container images, but also being able to search those images is disabled unless you're authenticated to Catello. Um, and Podman does support authentication. So if you're unauthenticated, uh, if you haven't logged in, you're not going to see uh, containers which are associated with these life cycles. I have another one, which I've labeled as public. And you're going to see that the unauthenticated pool is set to true. So in that case, if you're unauthenticated, you can also you can query and search for those container images, and you can also pull them. And I'm going to show you the Podman client here in a moment, and I'm going to show you uh, what that might look like. So there's the other one. And here I've got unauthentic unauthenticated pool set to true. Now, the containers that have the for BusyBox, those have been associated with the private uh, life cycle. And Hello World should be available in the public. So let's see what happens if I'm going to search. So well, let's make sure I'm not logged in. And that's that's the uh, URL for my Catilla serve. The next thing we're going to do is a Podman search. I'm turning off uh, the SSL uh, verification because it's a self-signed cert, and I don't want those results to uh, it's throw a warning unless I do that. So let's see. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to issue a search. And you can specify the uh, host name with a trailing slash. If you don't provide any other search terms, this just basically is going to return the entire available catalog. This is unauthenticated. And you can see that it, it does detect that there is the Hello World Docker image. Um, you can provide uh, a substring to search for, and it will try to search all the tags associated with those containers. So I can search that same host with hello, and it's going to match hello world. Now, what happens if I attempt to search for BusyBox? Well, nothing's going to happen because, again, BusyBox is associated with that uh, private lifecycle. All right. So the next thing we want to do is we can try authentication. the credentials. Now we've, now we've logged in. So this time, if I do the search, it will give me the entire catalog. And you can see both sets of container images. You have the BusyBox containers, and you have Hello World. Even though BusyBox is in the private, we're authenticated, we're going to see those images. And again, if I just provide Hello, it's going to give me Hello World containers. If I search for Busy box or anything associated with busy, I'm going to see all of those containers too. And that's pretty much it. And, I, and I, I don't doubt that in the future, we're going to provide additional support for uh, Podman, making sure that it, we're fully compliant with the version two of the Docker client API. All right, Melanie, that was it. Thanks so much, James. That was great. Yep. And just are there any questions? I'll just take a look. None that I can see. If there are at a later stage, I can ask them. So then up next is Chris with uh, notifications on content view change. All right, thank you. Let me go ahead and present my screen here. 
All righty. Can you go ahead and see that? It's just coming up now. All right. Yeah, yeah it's there now. Okay. So um, this is a small change that we added, uh, but it's been requested by uh, people. Uh, basically what it is is that if you have a content host attached to a content view and um, you change that on the UI, the client won't be able to pick it up. Uh, it'll still think it's attached to the um, to the old content view. So what we what you do to remediate that either is wait for the client to check in, which is every four hours, or if you need to run it, you know, need to update something right away, uh, you run subscription manager refresh. Um, so what we've done is we've added some notifications to the UI uh, to let you know to run that uh, command on the client. So what I'm going to do first is demonstrate uh, doing multiple hosts. So we'll go ahead and select all three of these. And if we do select action, change lifecycle environment, uh, you'll see that to update, run the subscription manager refresh command. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and see what it looks like now from a, a single content host. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just change this guy. So you can see here that, again, we basically want to run the subscription manager refresh. Uh, if you're not updating a client right away, it's fine to wait for the subscription manager check-in, but this is basically just so people know if they're going to update something right away after they make this change to go do that. Um, and that was it. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Um, there is just one question not related to your talk. Is this the latest version of Foreman? I suppose the answer to that is yes. Um, or will be available soon. Um, let me just check now. Is there any other questions? There are not. So, Leos, you are up next. Okay. Let me share the screen. Mm. Can you see my window, Foreman? Everything? Everything. Cool. So I'm going to talk about global registration template. Uh, global registration template is the first part of feature uh, in our effort to make registration of already running hosts to the foreman as simple as possible. Basically, the idea is to give user one simple command and register the host without any other steps. Uh, it's only for already running hosts, so it's not for, let's say, provisioning and so on. Uh, first thing is that we have the global registration template. In current developer branch, it's almost empty. There is only checking the route. But in the future, there will be, also, of course, the steps for registering hosts running on all of the sort different distros. And for example, I can show you right now, this is still working under the progress, but we collect the host name, we collect IP address or the OS versions, and with other simple steps, we register the host to the format. It's easy and simple, and with the option to edit the template, users can customize the steps, so they can update the templates and do basically whatever they want. The difference between the global registration one and the host registration template is that this one is not tied to the host object. So it's, let's say, you are more free to do whatever you want to do here. And also there's an option, oh, I forgot to say, there is a new endpoint called register, which will generate this global registration template. And the value can be set on in the settings provisioning the default registration template. And yes, that's basically everything about this new feature. As I said, uh, it's a first pull request merge of the effort. There is a RFC on the discourse. Uh, it's the complete behavior is described there. And so if you want to know, just check the form and discourse. You will find all other informations there. And that's everything for me.
Thank you, Liz. That was excellent. Um, I don't see any questions so far. Just checking. But none. But if there are, we can take them later on. So then up next with two presentations is Dominic. So the around the error page and also uh, the removal of a puppet run button. The puppet run button. So when you're ready, Dominic. Uh, yes. I'm ready, so uh, I will share the screen. Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, anybody see my screen? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So, the first first improvement is the better error page, because uh, when you running the foreman in the production mode. In the past, uh, there was a there was a usual stack trace, a stack trace of error that shows uh, where the foreman is installed, where uh, what kind of uh, libraries are installed, what kind of versions of libraries are installed, and so on. And uh, it could be understood as some possible uh, security issue. So we. Uh, we improve it uh, in way that you have to uh, you have uh, on you have only uh, we have only message about that that the some kind of error has occurred and uh, and uh, in the message is also the request ID that is later used in a, a brand new uh, break task that has uh, only one job to get error, get uh, some get some information about that error from the log file or for now only for log file uh, so uh, i will show that uh, i improve my code of foreman in a way that if i uh, click on the about page uh, the error has occurred so this is the generic message that something went wrong, and this is the first uh, error that was occurred. And uh, in the old page, there will be some kind of... Okay, again. Uh, there should be some some list of, uh, of errors. What happened it? But there is no errors, so it's a security uh, compliant. But there is some kind uh, of command that shows uh, how can you fetch the log from for this kind of request ID. So we can we can uh, take the uh, lines of stack trace from log files uh, only by request ID. So that's, that's the first one, improvement. Uh, uh, it's only affects the log files. So if you have some kind of uh, sending logs to the uh, Elasticsearch on another log backend, uh, there will be only message that you should look for this request ID in your log, logging backend. So this was the first one, uh, uh, news. The second one is about uh, dropping the puppet run button. So I will look on the some hosts and I will click on the some host. And there was in this area, there was a button to run the puppet run button. But we need to drop it because we are trying to remove to move the to, to remove puppet from core but and to move it to the own uh, plugin like Ansible is or our other kind of these tools. So we have to remove the puppet ribbon in that way. And uh, there is a workaround or another way how to do it. We can we can install the remote execution plugin and you can just schedule a remote job, job that makes something similar. You can use the SSH some commands about that and I can perform the command there and I can uh, schedule it for now or future execution or it could be some recurring execution and if I send it it will do it also I can 
I can specify what kind of hosts can do it. So for now, there is only one. But if I select all these hosts, I can schedule it remote job two from this page. And I have there two of my hosts. That's all from me. That's great, Dominic. Thank you very much. That You're welcome. Me. I don't see any questions related to that as of yet. Um, and then Ole is up next with templates DSL docs. Yep, one sec. No problem. Take your time. <laughs> So, okay, um, I'm here today to introduce you uh, a new documentation um, page. It's located under Administer About and Templates DSL link. This documentation page uh, is related to um, micros you can use to write your own templates, like report template or any kind of templates, actually. Uh, the page includes uh, some basic help, um, which describes you the syntax of templates and basic usage. Mm. Actually, this is quite a helpful page. So if you are new to template writing, I would suggest you to look into this. Um, also, the page uh, separated or divided into sections. Uh, each section, each, each section, sorry, uh, is related to specific um, template template kind. Uh, like, uh, for example, if you want to um, write a new report template, uh, I would assume you you would go to reports section. Uh, the each section is divided into classes, but I would suggest you to see them as chapters or something similar. Um, in those classes uh, are listed macros which are available um, to use. For example, let's see uh, this one, which is called load hosts. Um, on this page, uh, you would uh, see the description of the macro, few examples, uh, as well as uh, parameters, the method or the macro accepts, and the return value. Um, the quite um, helpful thing um, that uh, almost all the objects uh, in the in this um, page um, has references for example if the load macros uh, load hosts macro returns hosts um, there is a reference to this object and you after you go there you can see um, representation let's say of this uh, class or object and you can see which uh, properties you could get from this um, object for example uh, interfaces and uh, other stuff um also also there are two special section uh, the first one uh, called additional the second one is called basic ruby methods um, the latest one is about uh, basic <laughs> Ruby classes uh, uh, like uh, integer or general object, etc. Uh, there you can find uh, documentation about Ruby methods, I would say. Um, the first one, uh, which I mentioned earlier, uh, is additional section. Uh, there are classes or actually objects um, you're working with 
uh, whilst writing a template. Uh, you can find their hosts, uh, subnets, organization, well, other resources as well. And after you click, for example, host manage, uh, you can, you'll see uh, the list of properties you can um, get. Simple description and return value. Um, I guess that's it. Just check it out. <laughs> it looks very helpful. Ole, thank you very much. And um, let me see. Yeah, no, I think that's everything. So uh, thank you, everyone, for your presentations. Thank you, everyone who's watching on the live stream for letting me know about the audio issues and for staying with us. I will upload the recording so that nobody else has to look through this. And I think that's everything for today. So thanks for, for being with us and see you in a few weeks. Thanks all. Thanks all.